I called Sarah and I said, look, I've, I've found a pretty cool boat. Um, it's 22 meters long and it's got no guardrails. <laughs> That's a good sell to the wife. Yeah, yeah. yeah, she's like, well, are you nuts? Meet Mike, the captain of this one-off, 72-foot, 12-meter wide, ultimate performance catamaran. Together with his wife, Sarah, and their daughters, they live aboard this incredible vessel. As a professional sailor, Mike has always had the need for speed and unique boats. When they went looking for their boat to set off with, they came across commotion and fell in love. Her unique pot design, sweeping lines and amazingly simple and light build will give any other performance catamaran a run for his money. After over a year of preparation, they have just left on their voyage and crossed the Atlantic, starting their travels along the world oceans on this ultimate performance cruiser. Follow along for a full tour and interview to know what it's like to live on this vessel. I said, well, obviously the first thing we would do is put guardrails on the boat and, you know, but it, it's a big, safe platform. It's going to sail really well, uh, loads of space for the kids, and it's simple. Long story short, we pretty much fell in love with the boat. Sarah came and had a look at it and, and saw the same things that I did. Um, and here we are. In the year and a half we've had her, there have been a couple of times when I've thought to myself, what have we done? Yeah. <laughs> um, it's too much boat, it's totally impractical, and you know, it is a lot of those things. Um, but it's also, it's also proved to be a, a, an awesome boat. Um, you know, she's uh, all the things we expected really. Uh, she sails really well, she's a big stable platform. We never bought, we were never looking for a boat to sit in marinas. Um, our plan is to get to the Pacific and go and yep. dive and surf and hang out off the, off the grid. And um, uh, so, yeah, we've spent a year and a half in the med um, and it's been okay, but I think it'll be better when we sort of let her stretch her legs a bit. I think we're dying to see uh, the boat itself. <laughs> so, yeah, maybe we can start and uh, walk to the, to the front. And, sure. Uh, See how much of a trampoline castle this is. So. Okay. Yeah. So uh, she's a, a, a pod cat. So um, there's no connection between the saloon area and the hull. So you have to go outside. Um, a lot of people don't like that. I think that's why you know she was uh, she wasn't snapped up sooner. Um, but it's actually got it's got ups upsides as well. Yeah. Um, of course, the one is you've got all this amazing visibility. Um, and you know your sail handling is from a really nice secure position right here uh, you can talk to the person at the helm here you've just got amazing visibility of the whole sail plan um, and uh, of course it keeps the boat light because all of this would normally be structure and we've just got a couple of carbon beams and trampoline yeah so um, all up the boat weighs 15 tons um, and that's as she is here with fuel and water and Wow. A lot of kids' books. <laughs> that's in, that's incredibly light for um, such a big footprint. Yeah, and you know she's not a not a super exotic construction. I mean the hulls are um, western cedar plank with um, glass and epoxy. Um, the pod is foam core and glass and epoxy. And the only um, kind of exotic bits are the beams themselves, which are carbon. Um, so really, she's she's kept light by just keeping stuff you don't need off the boat um, yeah. the hulls are long and thin um, and um, you know for a for a 72 footer I mean she's probably got about as much living room as I don't know I mean a modern 40 foot charter cat has yeah. more space than we do definitely um, yeah so yeah hop on over so we see a big dagger board here as well so yeah that's, uh, so the boat draws uh, 1.2 meters with the boards up and uh, 3.2 with them down. Um, so everything from this beam forward is actually um, empty space. Well, it should be empty. It's full, yeah. of, it's full of stuff. Kites of and boards and dive gear and it's not a living area. Kids' toys. And <laughs> but yeah, it's not a living area. Um, so I mean, you can see kind of how much of the boat is. You know, in, in in modern charter catamaran terms, kind of wasted. You know, um, there's probably like 20 foot here that's not used for accommodation. Um, so, big trampoline. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen the kids jumping the all kids, the time. Yeah. 
I think that's the way to make friends, right? It's just like <laughs> exactly. you want to come to our trampoline and like. Yeah. So um, yeah, the sail plan is pretty simple. Um, roller furling working jib and slab reefing main. And then I've got a staysail on a removable furler, um, which runs up to the top spreader. Um, and uh, I'm in the process of sorting out a storm jib arrangement. Um, yeah. That will be flown from the inside as well? Or yeah, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, the, the longer on here kind of keeps, helps keep four-stay tension. Um, so the, the four-stay attachment doesn't just rely on the, on the forward cross beam and the, um, the martingale. Um, so it's, the boat's really quite nice and stiff. Um, I just wish they'd extended the longer on another kind of meter or so, so I could fly code zeros off that. But yeah. You know, we've got a lot of plans for the boat. That's um, for the future. For the future, yeah. That's for the future. And then uh, we've got a couple of symmetric spinnakers, um, which are essentially flown from each bow. Here's a good case of a compromise on this boat. Um, the anchor storage and chain storage is right at the base of the mast which from a sailing point of view is exactly where you want it because the weight is nice and central. Um, it would make a lot more sense from a cruising point of view to have the anchor coming off a roller on the bow. Um, so when we're picking up the anchor, the boat kind of naturally, you know, feathers to into yeah. the wind. Um, picking it up from the middle of the boat, we have to have someone on the engine controls essentially driving the boat to stay over the anchor. Uh, you know, which is fine, um, yeah. but when it's really windy and gusty and there are other things going on and, uh, you know, it it's makes a bit, it of, a, more bit of a pain, yeah. yeah. So um, we're actually thinking of having a uh, kind of a, a mobile um, roller that you can um, sort of pull forward onto the beam. Yeah. So, you know, but yeah, every boat's a compromise. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, we've got to flake the chain into the locker because the locker's not very deep. Um, but then we have 70 square meters of trampoline. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the, the shape of the pod is sort of something I never really uh, get tired of looking at. It's just, um, yeah, it's just such a cool organic shape with all these kind of compound curves. Um, and interestingly, the, the way the boat was built, um, the pod is completely sort of non-structural. So you could actually, like in theory, you could take it away um, and it, it wouldn't affect the structural integrity of the boat. Um, the beams do all the all the work of holding the hulls in place and supporting rigging loads. Um, yeah, the pod's just a kind of nice place to hang out. Yeah, the hulls are completely um, symmetric. They're, um, I mean, within within themselves and yep. to each other. So we don't have uh, you know asymmetric bows like a katana, for example. Um, they're just super super narrow. Um, not very deep, a um, little bit of rocker, but not a lot. And um, yeah, I mean, looking at it from here, it's a it's a pretty small accommodation space. I mean, it's basically from that open hatch there to the companionway, um, yeah. which uh, yeah, not a lot of room. It's all, it's all you need. It's all we need. It's and all you, need. Um, you know, I think I think knowing what your what your goals are when buying when shopping for a boat is really important because um, you know a boat might be great for one mission but hopeless at another you know um, as much as I'd like to do some high latitude sailing at some point you know I just this, this is not the boat, this isn't the boat to do it in um, but for for cruising around the Caribbean and the Pacific and Indo and wherever else we decide to go yeah um, you know in warm weather it's a it's an awesome machine for that yeah um, and um, yeah and if we'd gone for a super robust kind of high latitude capable expedition type boat uh, you know we'd have a small cockpit we'd have um, you know she wouldn't be as much fun to sail um, we certainly wouldn't have all the space to hang out when the weather's good yeah so you know um, yeah it's important to know I think what you're going to use the boat for um, and um, and accept that that you're going to have to compromise in some area every I mean, boat is a compromise yeah, so, yeah yeah and you know I mean even like I know performance cats are kind of 
becoming more and more popular these days. Um, but, you know, a, uh, a, a high performance cat that has lots of accommodation is going to be at least 50, 55 foot. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be built out of exotic materials to achieve the performance while having that volume. And, uh, and it's going to be a, a really expensive boat, you know. So um, I think one thing this boat showed us is if you sort of think outside the box a little bit. Um, you just know, make you the box really big. Make the box <laughs> big. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, yeah, I mean, I think we've, we've ended up with a yeah. pretty cool platform for our adventures. Hi, guys. Uh, time for a short interruption again. This episode is sponsored by Sail Surfer. It's an amazing product uh, that you just plug into your network and it records all of your sailing trips. And you can also share them with your friends, which is really nice because we are now anchored in Las Palmas, Gran Canaria. Uh, so we're not actually doing any sailing ourselves anymore. But it's crossing season, so a lot of people are sailing across the ocean. So I can follow my friends all the way across the ocean on the app. I can see how they're doing, what their wind speed is, um, how much uh, speed they're doing themselves and how far they still have to go. It's really nice to follow them in this way until I actually do some sailing and talk to them. Uh, they have it connected to their Starlink, so you can connect it to any other Wi-Fi network you have on board. But when you're close to shore, it has a built-in SIM card, so you don't actually need to connect it to anything. It just works standalone, just by plugging it into your network. It also provides a remote anchor watch, which is a really amazing function for people that are living on board and leaving their boat on anchor for a long time. So I really like it. I hope you like it as well. You can get 10% discount with the code BOATLIFEISBEST10. And back to the video. We're in the back now. This is the entrance. Yeah, so uh, this is the uh, companionway for the, the porthole. Um, and uh, straight into my daughter's cabin. Um, so this is the the extra bunk we added. Um, I mean, the boat really was was built very minimalist. Um, there's not a lot of storage. So I'm in the process of adding some shelves to, you know, hold books. Um, we, we're also busy uh, putting some more portholes in um, because there were practically none. Um, Get some more airflow going. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. I mean, we've got you know we've got a big opening hatch up forward, which which gets breeze through here quite nicely. Um, but you can see, I mean, one thing I really liked about the boat was, like, this is the hull. You know, um, there are no linings. You can, you can kind of you can see everything. Um, it's just, just been really nicely finished off. I think um, it's just clean and tidy, and um, what you see, as you said, what you see is what you get. Yeah. Um, and there's loads of headroom too. I mean, there's, I don't know. Yeah, it, it's tall. Seven yeah. and a half feet or something. Um, so here's the heads compartment um, with a separate shower and a nice little view of the fish. <laughs> it is, yeah. And um, here's the, uh, the master suite. The master suite. <laughs> In all its glory. Yeah. <laughs> this is also like the widest part of the, the hole or? Um, it's actually narrowing a little bit already, already the, hardest, there, yeah. the, the widest part is I believe um, about where you are around where the head um, is yeah yeah and in fact this berth the nice thing is it's a it's a standard size it's um, two meters by 140 mm -hmm. um, so you know you can buy a, a regular mattress and it fits right in but it's actually 140 back here and like 138 up at the head so <laughs> the holes are already beginning to taper a little bit yeah um, and that is literally it. The other side is exactly the same. Um, well, with the exception that I've yet to build the upper bunk. Yeah. Um, so. It's a master you know, suite, a, head, and a bunk bed. That's, that's it. it. Yeah. We've got a, um, a watertight door on each side um, yeah. to the engine room, which again stretches off a long way. Um, oh, that gets well in there. Yeah. So you know that again is kind of wasted space, but. Yeah. It's not wasted space because really to sail well and to be comfortable at sea, um, multi hulls really need to be light in the ends. Uh, and, and that's what they've achieved by, by having these empty, um, empty spaces at, at each yep. end. So one thing we really liked about the boat when we first got on board was the, the cockpit area, just because it's, it's so wide um, yep. and, and it's safe for the kids to wander around because you know they're contained by um, the beams and the hulls and wherever they go. Um, I'm in the process of recorking the deck, so um, <laughs> excuse the state of that. Um, 
Yeah, so we've got a, a little sunshade that fits in over here. And at the moment it gets secured to the runners, but we're actually going to put some, uh, some carbon tubes to support the ends. Yep. Uh, so it can stay up while we're sailing. Um, and then underway, like I was saying earlier, you've just got great visibility and easy access to, the, to your sail controls. Um, one area where you don't have good visibility is directly across to the opposite bow. So this is the pod. Um, again, there are a few jobs going on around here. So like always. Yes, like always. Um, so again, the pod's got sort of you know different areas to hang out in, um, and actually these tables can swap around. So you know that can be the dining area. Um, this can be a little chill out area. When we're when we're underway doing overnight passages just as a family, um, this table drops down and that becomes a double bed. And um, you know the whole the whole family basically just we just live in the pod. Um, so we're heading across the Atlantic in a in a week or so, and there's actually another family that's going to be joining us for the trip. Um, so obviously we're not all going to be living in here, but um, you know the whole starboard hull is theirs, and the port hull is ours, um, and uh, and this is obviously available for you know meals and yep. um, communal cooking area. And, yeah, and 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 that's what I find quite nice about the the podcat design is that that hull is totally private um you know if it's raining you might get a little wet when you when you're running from there to here but um other than that i don't really see it as that much of a disadvantage yeah um and it's really quiet in here too even underway um it's just um yeah it's it's kind of nice having these different areas that are separate from each other and it works really well um Cool. So we have like yeah. the your navigation station there in the front. But yeah, I mean we tend to do pretty much everything on on laptop and um, paper charts. The uh, old Raymarine plotter there. I think I've still got chart cart, uh, cartridges for it, but we we virtually never use it. Um, and uh, yeah, you know there's good visibility forward from from the window over there. Um, yeah, this is our little galley. Um, we, we haven't gone the way of uh, um, induction cooking yet. So, you know, we're on gas here. We've got a little um, convection oven microwave combo, uh, which we can run, run off our batteries uh, via an inverter. And um, just a, an air-cooled fridge um, with drawers, which has been a game changer. I mean, it's so much more efficient in terms of um, battery usage. It's incredible. Um, when, when I bought the boat, she had old AGM batteries and we were running the generator like twice a day just to uh, um, to get by. And since fitting them, combined with a couple of extra solar panels, I mean, we don't run the generator in like, we haven't run it in months. Um, you mean fitting the lithium batteries, yeah. Yeah. So the plans are to cross now to the, yep. uh, to the Caribbean? Yeah, in a, in a week or so, we're gonna head over and um, um, yeah. Uh, definitely spend the winter there and possibly next summer we'll head down to Grenada, you know, winter, um, spend the hurricane season in the Southern Caribbean and then we'll see. I mean, the Pacific's the goal, but um, I'm not sure when we're going to, if we're going to do that, um, you know, next summer or later. I, I don't know. Yeah. We're, we're not big planners. Yeah. So I think uh, the question that everyone always has, yeah. like uh, on a big performance get there, it's like, how quick does it go? How does it sail? Um, Sails really well. <laughs> so, um, well, top speed so far, uh, just like a hair under 30 knots. Um, that is in flat water, offshore, uh, blowing about 24, 25 knots. Um, like literally just, you know, a couple of hundred meters off the beach. So really flat water. Um, so you're doing like wind speed all the way up to 30 uh, knots. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, but the thing is, you know, it's a family cruising boat, first and foremost. Well, you made it into one. We've made it into <laughs> one. We're making it into one. Um, and those sorts of speeds just on, are not relaxing. I mean, yeah. it's really fun when you're out with your mates for a couple of hours to, you know, put the hammer down and just yeah. <laughs> bomb around, just there, rip yeah. around it at, you know, those sorts of speeds. But um, I mean, I mentioned that we wanted a boat that sailed well, but really the reason we want that is so that we can keep sailing in light wind. Um, and that we can maintain like safe, relaxing, but fairly good 
average speeds with light loads. So, you know, um, regu I mean, quite, it's quite normal for us to just have no mainsail up at night. We'll just carry on under headsail alone. Uh, we sail the boat really conservatively because you have to. It's a, you know, it's a big, powerful boat and um, it can really bite back. So, um, yeah, you know, um, I mean, we, as we've got more used to the boat, we've sort of got more comfortable sailing at higher sus sustained speeds. Um, so in, you know, in, in daylight with good viz, um, if the sea state's right, you know, like we came back from Sardinia at about 16 to 18 knots um, during the day. <laughs> during the day, yeah. Um, and it was, it was great. I mean, the boat is like, she just, she's like, she's on rails, you know, with, yeah. I mean, boat design can, can't move on and, you know, things come in and out of fashion and, you know, we don't have reverse bows. Uh, we don't have, you know, it's like she's a, a fairly timeless boat, but you'll never get away from having the difference that having long, narrow hulls makes and keeping the ends of the boat light. Yeah. So, you know, at sea, she's really comfortable. Um, she doesn't sort of uh, pitch wildly. Um, and yeah, you can just kind of, you can you can make easy miles. Yeah. Um, what are you expecting? Like twenty four hour, like like day day um, mileage. This is the first time we're going to be crossing the Atlantic yeah. on the boat. I mean, she's she's done the trip a couple of times, but yeah. not with us. Um, you know, I mean, I'll be ecstatic if we're doing two hundred and forty miles. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, maybe in a few years' time, I'll get some of my mates on board and send Sarah and the kids ashore, and we'll just. Wind the arc. Fang it across. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, I want everyone to enjoy this. Yeah. And get everyone involved. Feeling relaxed while you're doing it is a big part of that. And, yeah. and you know, that comes from feeling safe and in control. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, yeah we so just had the whole discussion like an easy 10, 12 knots. Like, that's that's the best. That's amazing. I mean, that's, that's, like, the, that's the holy grail, right? Yeah. Um, you know, when we, when we are sailing faster, we found that when we slow the boat down or we get to an anchorage at the end of the day there's literally like such a you can feel the the um, adrenaline sort of <laughs> ebbing away and everyone just goes like you know <laughs> which yeah. is kind of exhilarating in a way yeah but like i mean that's 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 not how you want to go through your <laughs> cruising days yeah um it's loads of fun giving it horns for a bit but yeah um yeah uh you know easy low stress um, mileage is what it's all about. That's what it's all about. Yeah. And of course, you know, looking after the boat so she looks after you. I mean, yeah. uh, you know, she's under a lot less load when you're just pootling along at eight to ten knots. Yeah. I mean, you know, the pilot isn't having a problem steering and, um, you know, it's just, yeah, it feels right. For showing me around and, uh, yeah, I think you have lots of more people uh, knocking on the boat being like, <laughs> hey, what is this? Yeah. This is a cool one. Um, yeah, we'll have to hang a do not disturb sign. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. Yes, perfect. Thanks. Take it easy.